Thank you for taking the time to review this short presentation of what life is like at Cove School and what we can offer your child if you choose to send them here to Cove School. This is the same presentation I gave to parents live via Zoom recently. Unfortunately, the sound quality of the presentation was not good enough to be posted on the website. Therefore, I've narrated over the PowerPoint and merged this with a section of the live Q&A session from the second viewing. The people in the room with me were Mrs Jordan, who is the progress leader for Year 7 and Transition Coordinator, two Year 7 students who were Jacob and Maya, two Year 11 students who were Evan and Maddie, and of course myself, my name is Dr King, and I'm the head teacher here at Cove School. I would now like to take you through a few key aspects of our school. And this is designed to complement the virtual tour of the school that you can find on the school website, our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. We are all very proud of Cove School. It has been an incredible journey over the past six years. In answering an unscripted question about why he would recommend Cove School on the virtual tour, one year 11 boy answered because it constantly challenges itself to improve. He was absolutely right. We have a relentless focus on being the best. And the simple reason is this, because every child in Farnborough deserves the best. Over the last five to six years, we have reviewed, changed and refined nearly every aspect of the school, which has brought us to a point which is a much better place for children to learn. One where all stakeholders take responsibility for their learning so that every child can achieve more than they ever thought possible. Ofsted recently graded us as solidly good in all four categories, but this is just one mark. Yes, it's an important mark. GCSE results are constantly improving, but this is another marker. Behaviour and attitudes to learning are the best they have ever been at Cove School. And yet, this is another marker. But actually, what is really important is the ethos as you walk around the school, as you see the children play, as you see the work they are producing in the classrooms, as you see the teacher-student relationships. You see an ethos of a caring, engaging, vibrant learning environment. One where children are happy, safe and proud of their school. Our vision is simple. Every child in every classroom, every day, achieving excellence. This starts before your child begins at Cove School in September 2021. It starts by building the essential partnership between school, home and your child in their primary school. This partnership is the bedrock to future success. Mrs Jordan, who has worked at Co for a long time, leads the transition team and heads up the Year 7 tutor team. She starts by visiting all the children in their primary school from Easter onwards. We then organise transition days in June, which includes a new parents' induction evening. We also offer additional visits for specific students who need additional support during transition. Your child's experience at Cove means they are part of a tutor group, one where the tutor stays with them throughout their time at Cove School. They are part of a year group, and they're also part of a house system. We have four houses at Cove, which is Austin, Wellington, Montgomery and Cody. All of this helps your child settle in, make friends and be part of our growing caring community, a place where we work together. At Cove, we have a simple saying, work hard, be kind. It's as simple as that. Work hard, be kind. 
why we believe this is the best place for your child, because we have a strong moral sense and determination that every child can achieve regardless of where they have come from and what life experiences they have had. We are simply ambitious for every child that walks through our doors at Cove School. The staff at Cove School and our amazing students have worked hard to constantly improve our GCSE results. Last year was a challenging year for all of us, and yet the improvement continued. We planned carefully securing two full sets of mock examinations conducted under exam board conditions. My staff spent a considerable amount of time moderating the students' work. They spent hours discussing the evidence with exam boards and with the in Hampshire inspection team to ensure the most robust data was submitted. Therefore, you will see two thirds of the students gaining a pass in both English and mathematics. Over 60% of triple science students gained the highest grades of seven to nine. In six subject areas, over 75% of students gained a four plus. And 69 students gained the highest grade nines in a variety of subjects. All of this academic success is underpinned by our extensive extracurricular programme. High quality and broad pastoral support, award winning programmes such as that for careers and post 16 education, and our innovative student leadership programme which begins from year seven. Soon after your child enters that year group, they can apply to be a junior prefect. Teaching and learning is our core business. It will always be our main focus and key priority for improvement, no matter how good we get. Cove has been a place of choice for new teachers to train, with over 13 PGC, SKIT and NQTs training at our school this year, from places like the Waden Eye to Eye Partnership, Portsmouth, Southampton and Winchester Universities. As many of you know, stability in staffing has been a real battle in recent years for a variety of national and local reasons. We are now in a much more stable and better place with staffing. And we believe that the teaching staff at Cove School is the best it has ever been. Our curriculum is a broad and balanced model one where we ensure all our students experience the fullest range of subjects for the three years of Key Stage 3. In Year 9, they can choose their four GCSE BTEC option subjects, which they can study to GCSE level. Our teaching strategy, as can be seen on this slide, is what permeate, permeates everything we do at Cove School. At the heart of every subject and lesson is the core knowledge and understanding required for deep learning, but this is underpinned by the skills in literacy, oracy, and active listening. To ensure every child in every lesson, every day is supported and enabled to succeed, succeed we use a variety of data and one-to-one -one conversations to ensure this vision becomes a reality. Emotional and social support is given by a wide variety of specialist trained staff in our learning support and raising aspirations areas. To support every child academically, in addition to attendance and behaviour data, we have a relentless focus on closing the knowledge gap in order to develop deeper understanding and build cross-curricular links from year 7 through to year 11. Gaps are identified through question level analysis of every test and exam your child takes, through regular feedback in lessons and in books, and through our Year 7 cross-curricular project-based homeworks. Once the gap has been identified, the classroom teacher firstly will work to support your child in their understanding. Additional support can be provided through extra study sessions at lunch or after school. What we call our do now tasks at the start of every lesson, which is there to support memory retention and revision. 
or more specific focused intervention that is delivered by the curriculum leaders and other specialist staff. This all starts in year seven to ensure every child achieves the best they can by the time they get to year 11 and can secure the course of their choice and the college of their choice. It is unfortunate that we can't have parents on site at this time due to COVID. I do hope you understand and we have tried hard to think of various ways to get you on site. We love showing off our school to parents and prospective students who tour our school and are always impressed by the work and the ethos they find as they tour the school. We believe Cove is the best school and school of choice for your child. On the slide, you can see just a few of the reasons why we think that Cove School is the best, but there are many, many more that we could say. We can offer limited tours of the school for students with specific educational needs, for disabilities and similar personalised issues like those. Please remember the 31st of October is the deadline for admissions. And if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us via email or phone. And we hope and look forward to seeing you in person in September 2021 or before. Following this presentation is an extract of the live Q&A session uh, from the second event. Uh, I hope you enjoy. As, Thank as you for listening. normally working. Um, but the, the, the school is, is a great place and I know I'm biased because I'm head teacher here, uh, but hopefully these lovely children and, and the uh, pictures that you see on our Facebook feed, if, if you want to have a look on there, um, we tend to post quite a lot of pictures of children uh, working or playing sports or whatever it might be on our Facebook feed, uh, on the uh, virtual tour of the school, and hopefully by the simple the conversations you've had with our year seven parents uh, who have their children at the school at the moment will be of help because they've got first-hand information uh, back. So if you have any questions, uh, please just put them into the comments uh, bank, um, and Miss Stavey will pick them up and pass them to myself, Miss Jordan, or these lovely children that are in front of if not, I will just pick on them and, and ask them some questions um, that they don't know about yet. <laughs> oh, thank you for the informative presentation. Can you tell us what the choices will be for options? I guess, is that key stage four? It's key stage four options. Maddie, what did you take for options? Um, I took art, drama, music and history. Evan? I took history, geography, wood tech, and computer science. So, you haven't taken options yet. Um, so our <laughs> options, uh, so they, they can take four subjects and they can choose um, one of three different languages. Obviously, normally they would follow the language that they've been studying at Key Stage 3. Uh, there's a wide range of technology subjects uh, from resistant materials uh, to graphics, to textiles, to art. Um, they have got obviously the, the humanities choices of history and geography. They can do GCSE PE. Um, every child in the school has to take normal regular PE. Um, that's part of the legal requirement, uh, but you can do additional to that. We have computer science. Um, obviously IT doesn't exist anymore. It's all computer science uh, now that are taught there. Uh, food, uh, food technology is a really popular subject. Uh, we do art and 3D art, which is also very popular. Child development it is another popular subject as well. And um, we also offer triple science for our brightest scientists that go uh, that, there as well. Can you just clarify the languages? The languages are French, German and Spanish. And do we do any tech courses? Um, no, we don't. Um, that was partly to do with a lot of the government changes that took place. We are looking at the moment um, uh, sorry, no, that's not true. We do BTEC or what we call BCERT. It's a similar sort of qualification in food technology. Uh, and we're looking at doing BTEC or BCERT in PE. What's it like in the houses? So what's the house system like? Oh. Which, which house are you in? I'm in Austin. Okay. Tell me about Austin House. Um, Austin's great. I love it. I mean, our forms are really good. So you have two forms within the Austin house. So you have A1, we have A2, and you stay with these people um, for registration. And then you have 
um, sports day and it's so fun because you're in your house and you're supporting um, all the people through the years and yeah it's just great fun being a part of the house and you know so so we introduced house ties um three years ago i think it was now um to give them some identity of of, of the house system going through the school and the normal circumstances they meet as a house for assembly as well as a year group for assembly but obviously we don't have assemblies at this moment in time uh, sports day they all have to wear their house colors so um as you as you might see on some of the pictures, you will see all the green colours together, all the red houses, which represent different um, houses. They each have a charity for the year, uh, which they do various uh, events for, whether it's cake sales or uh, music events uh, throughout the year. So um, the house system is something that we're looking to develop, but we've, we've made a start on it. Can girls join the football team? Yeah. Yes. The girls girls well, team. do you want to answer because you're part of it, aren't you? Um, yeah, so... Yeah, there is football teams and four yeah. girls and boys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you mentioned sh supporting struggling students. When we start, how do you challenge high achieving students? Evan. <laughs> Evan, go Evan. on. Well, I, I think a very good thing about the school is that the, the staff are always trying to get the best, out, both out of the students and for the students. So. The, they will cater to our needs and if they, a student needs a more challenging work then that can be provided definitely and currently since we did lose a lot of time last year we're now having some what we zone 11 or after school classes which are in currently in science but i'm sure other subjects will follow and we have to after i saw i said that um break and lunch times our rooms are always open if we need to ask questions or we'd like to get extra work and it is very nice because if we always ask, it's always met positively as we are trying to challenge ourselves. Okay. So from, from year seven, um, when uh, students enter into year seven, they do what they call cat tests. You just done your yeah. assembly a couple of weeks ago. Um, and the cat tests give us a kind of, they're called cognitive ability tests, C-A-T. Um, and they will give us a, kind of an intelligence test and a, an aptitude uh, test. And based upon that data, along with the data that comes from primary schools, we can work out who our brightest, potentially our brightest students are. Um, and uh, they, they are the people that we, we insist are stretched and challenged in, in their classes from year seven onwards. Um, but we also have for uh, some of our disadvantaged students, uh, which come under a very clear category of disadvantage, they form part of our brilliant club uh, and that links with um, PhD students from uh, various universities, uh, Surrey University, Oxford University, Southampton University, I think it was last year, uh, and also um, uh, King's College in London. Um, and they do projects with them over a period of time and they actually have to write up uh, a small research uh, project and they go to the university and they spend the day at the university, their parents get invited along uh, and so on. So it's, it's, a, it's a very sort of multifaceted approach, uh, but the key is what Evan said, is making sure that they are pushed and challenged within the classroom, um, as well as the wraparound uh, extracurricular that they get. Okay. What computing slash coding resources and focus do you have? Who does computing? You do really, doesn't it? Uh, we have a, a very good computer science department and all the equipment is up to date and we have very good staff who teach us normally in, in coding, coding language, Python is our language if any of you uh, are computer buffs, but uh, we, um, it is very good, we do, we spend more time with uh, software, with software programming and we have uh, other things that can help us such as the uh, micro bits are called, so it's very small um, dot matrix robots almost i guess uh, but we can program them and we're all taught we're, we're at all everyone's taught from year seven to nine and as an option you can take later on and you do get some very in-depth knowledge that uh, even i struggle to understand sometimes but uh, it's uh, we have some very good uh, resources definitely yeah. so ch children start programming from from year seven so they use things like scratch have you used scratch yet or yeah yeah you have Okay, um, and um, build up their programming language to, to proper scripting languages like Python. Okay, um, what is your favourite part about the school? Um, you 
Well, my favourite is I like the sports and I like art and like drama. And there's a lot of good people here. The teachers are very nice. The, um, there's lots of nice people. And if you get lost, you can always go to a different year people and they'll show you where to go. And Murder? Oh, I think it's just the positivity and um, the, the encouragement from your teachers to, to push and get to that next level. And it's also um, actually experiencing relationships with other years is really nice. Um, and that interaction, yeah, it's just a lovely school to be a part of. And it's definitely grown since year seven. And I really enjoy it here. I think following on from what Matt said, the positivity here is really, really nice and very apparent to anyone who'd see it. Um, not as in, in every year, every class, it, you always, you never feel left out or anything. You always feel like you are in the right place. You always feel like you're in the best place for yourself and for education. Okay. Um, evening, can you please advise what support is in place for children with IEPs in primary school? Can people hear me? Because I'm probably best placed to answer you this. Do you want to come round to the front? No, thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if, could you give me a thumbs up if everyone can hear me speaking? Is that a thumbs up? Yeah, thank you. So in terms of students that have an individual education plan, one of the things that we do is you can arrange a transition partnership agreement through your current junior school. That involves a, a meeting prior to transition where we draw up an agreement and we look at what's been working well in the junior school that has had an impact on the students' progress and what some of the things that we could continue with in secondary, but also anything additional. So you could have a transition partnership agreement and then that would be re reviewed three months in to secondary school to see if those things are working. Obviously, if there was any concerns prior to that, then you could we could bring that review forward um, and start to look at any barriers or concerns that you have and how we can best address them. We tend to support children through what we call a one page profile, which clearly identifies their needs and their category of need, and it has strategies on there that the teachers can use within the classroom to support progress. It is usually done with the child. Um, and the parents, so particularly the child's voice is there, and they can tell us what they also think helps them. But Mrs Cosgrove's the current Senko, and if you do have any questions about that, just feel free to email her um, prior to transition, and she'll definitely be able to talk you through what is available. Okay. Um, how many children are there in each class, and how many forms in each year? There are eight uh, forms in each year group. Um, and the number of children in each class is probably around about 25. Uh, sometimes the top sets, particularly in maths and English, can reach 30. Uh, and some of the smaller groups, particularly in tech, because of the size of the rooms, can go down as low as 18 or 20. So probably around about 25, 26 is, is about the average number. Okay, and it's an eight form entry, do you say? It's an eight form entry, yes. Yeah. Are there any after school break time clubs? Obviously without COVID. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there's trampolining at lunchtime, you can do basketball, after school there's football on a Monday, um, that's all I know so far. <laughs> Ready? Um, yeah, there is a lot that you can do at breaking lunch and extracurricular. I did mock trials, so it was a law competition, and we worked with an actual magistrate and um, kind of learnt some of the aspects of law, and we went against other schools. Um, and then there's things like trips that you can go on. Um, I went to Poland with, with history department and I went skiing. Um, there's so many clubs, drama, um, there's shows that usually take place, obviously not right now, um, but music concerts, everything that you can get a part of. And you know, you can build those relationships between other years as well. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot. Yeah. Um, so just to confirm how many GCSEs the students end up taking? Uh, 10 GCSEs in the end. Okay. And do we have a sixth form? No. The reason, we, the reason we don't have a sixth form is because literally up the road we have Farnborough Six and Fcot, uh, which are two outstanding sixth forms, and something like 96% of our students go to both those colleges. 
Um, so for us, the competition to set up a sixth form and the cost um, wouldn't be worth it. And okay. um, how is bullying managed? Um, who wants to answer? Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> Go for it. I think obviously it is something that unfortunately would occur anywhere, but the school do very well to manage incidents, to deal with incidents very well. And the, the environment here means that I don't really think that many children will be afraid to speak up to teachers and staff because they're always here to help and that is very clear. So, and the policy of it is very strict. It's, there is, obviously as I said, that it's be impossible to have none almost, but there is very little at our school, which is very good. And it, the number has dropped definitely, but, and that has contributed to this nice environment that we have now. Yeah, and I think the support from um, anti-bullying ambassadors that we have in the school, as well as um, teachers and other students, I think that now the bullying has, like Evan said, dropped and it's a much nicer and place to be. So, yeah. I think, I think we have a, a, quite a simple sort of saying, really, as you go around code, work hard and be kind. Um, and it's very simple, really, um, that we have quite an open culture here that children feel very happy to come and talk to anybody if they are um, people are making unkind comments toward them um, or um, not being very nice to them which sometimes they class as bullying when it is actually unkind comments but some of it can be persistent uh, one of the reasons that we uh, ban mobile phones is because it's very hard to control what people put online um, and i think the the adage of sticks and stones will break my bones but names will never hurt me is is the wrong way around um, because when, when unkind comments are written down and people can read it over and over and over again uh, and people in the local community can add to those unkind comments, it's really hurtful. Um, so we pick that up very, very quickly and, and deal with it um, quite sternly uh, once, we, once we find out uh, what is going on. Okay, so we have a question about, um, I think it's relating to lunch passes. For lunchtime so I think I can answer this as well and um, some students we do issue some passes to some students for lunchtime they, those are usually for students who perhaps have um, a diagnosis such as ASD or social anxiety and perhaps they can find large queues um, or the lunchtime overwhelming and um, so in the best interest of that child's well-being it's better that they have a pass that allows them to go direct to the front pick up their lunch and then they can attend one of our nurture rooms or go to a quiet area in the school where it doesn't feel so overwhelming. Um, the school has clearly improved greatly in the last past five years. What are your ambitions for the next five years when our children will be students at your school? Oh, well, our, our ambitions are, we've still, uh, although I think behaviour is a hundred times better as one of the students said today, uh, than it was five years ago. Um, and I know at the moment we are kind of battling top buttons put up, up and, you know, which seems quite trivial, um, but it is really important uh, for us to get the little things right. Um, the sharpness of which learning takes place in the classroom, um, you know, attendance in the school is good, it's, it's 95, 96%, um, but we'd like to get it even higher. I think that the core aspect of where we want to improve comes down to teaching and learning and I think it will always be this to be honest of there are still um, areas where we need to push children further where we need to identify certain aspects of learning um, that are challenging sooner um, where we can put better support in uh, where it's needed so I think it's that constant refining of teaching and learning that we have the best uh, outcomes and the best support that we possibly can. Uh, so I say that's our key focus at the moment. Are students streamed by their abilities in all subjects, classes or just English, maths and science? Uh, they're not streamed, no, they're, they're mixed ability apart from those subjects. What are the start and end times of the school day? Uh, well at the moment we obviously got a staggered start and a staggered <laughs> end to, to, to the day, uh, but normally it's 8.30 to 3.05. Okay. Is there a strict uniform rules, things like jewellery and other information in regards to uniform? Yes. Uh, so the uniform you can collect from uh, Brenda's uh, and they sell exactly what, what you need. 
Uh, we are very strict on, on uniform in terms of the trousers that people wear, the shoes that they, they, they can wear, um, as I said, top buttons, ties, blazers, and so on. And part of that is, is to do with life skills. It's a part of it is about being proud to be a code student, but a part of it is preparation for life skills, that you are ready for the next stage in your life, that you take pride in your appearance. It's also uniform, apart from being identifier of code, it's actually a leveler that we are literally all part of the code lunar community, regardless of what your social or economic background is. Um, so uniform to us is very, very important. Do you have a list of the lunchtime and after school clubs that are available? And also, do you play rugby in PE and after school? Yes, we do play rugby. Uh, in fact, on the uh, virtual tour, the, the uh, match that is taking place on the upper field, although you might not be able to see it from the height, uh, is actually a rugby match that's taking place. Uh, sorry, what was the other part of the question? Um, a list of lunchtime yeah. activities. Yeah. Um, and there's a list of um, lunchtime activities and after school activities, which we um, photocopy off and we put on each um, tutor board in each tutor room so that the students are able to look and see what's going on. Plus they're put on the boards around the school as well. And you'll find them on our website. They're updated every half term. Um, do you have a list of the subject options that you spoke about on your website, please? Yeah. Yes, if you go on the website and look under a year nine options, you will see last year's option booklet on there and it has all the subjects. What percentage of students successfully go on to further education? Uh, this, is, this is a big success for us because uh, we are uh, one of the highest schools in Hampshire and we are one of the highest schools nationally for children that go on to sixth form and stay. And that's really important because some schools will report number of children going to sixth form, but come Christmas, they drop out. Uh, so for us, we are 2% uh, above Hampshire and 4% above national. Uh, so no, it's 96.8%, 96, I think it was last year. Okay, and last question, unless there's anyone else, and I'm happy to answer this if you want, since I did the policy, is did you say mobile phones were banned? And if so, how is this enforced and regulated? How many apps? Well, that's different. So in terms of the mobile phone policy, we brought that in about two years ago now, um, because we were experiencing a high percentage of um, cyberbullying, and that some of it was taken happening during the school day. Um, the mobile phone policy is very clear now. Students must have it switched off and in their bag um, before entering the school gates in the morning. If throughout the day their mobile phone is seen or heard, in the first instance it's confiscated for 24 hours. Um, if they have a second offence, that's it's 48, and then a third offence is 72. Um, we have, the parents of the school have been amazing um, working with us in that policy. And we, I would go as far to say is it's pretty much eradicated. Um, we have the odd, odd mobile phone that has to be confiscated, but considering there's over 900 students, um, it's very rare that students will have mobile phones out in lessons or around the school. Um, and how many applicants do you have per space? Um, we, at the moment, we are sitting on one applicant for one, one space. Uh, last year we had um, slightly less and the year before that we had more. So it's, it's basically one for one. So our pan is 210. I'm really sorry, I'm, I'm not sure what the last question is, but it says, is there any item that they are not alone in school? Um, I'm not yeah. sure. Oh, it might be allowed. No. Oh, yeah, okay. um, no, normally um, children need to be off site by four o'clock. There are various exceptions to that if they are being supervised. So sometimes drama productions go on uh, late, um, but they'll have a member of staff with them. Sometimes there's sports fixtures, but obviously they have members of staff with them. And sometimes uh, art and tech run what they call deep learning uh, evenings where they go on to seven, eight o'clock in the evening and they have pizza and all this kind of stuff. Um, but obviously they're supervised with staff. Um, we don't allow children to be on site on their own. I also think that question might relate to items as in electronic items. Um, so okay. I think it's just the same as mobile phone. We don't encourage children to bring any electronic devices that could be lost, damaged, stolen, anything at all like that. And then obviously within our policy, we have other things like 
we highly recommend your children are not bringing things like monster drinks or fizzy drinks and things like that because they will be confiscated as, as well. Mm -hmm. um, can the children move up and down groups within English, science and maths and how yes. regularly is this reviewed? Uh, yes, you know? they can and it's reviewed once every term. Uh, it's definitely reviewed. I mean, in year seven, I started off in second to bottom and now I'm in top set in year 11 and that's the same for science. And yes, yeah, so there's always room to improve and to challenge yourself to get further up sets. So yeah, it's not a problem. And the last question is, can you get your own books from home? Is it maybe bring in your own books, like reading books and oh, things? If, if, if it, yes, you can. You, you bring yeah. in your own reading book. Yeah. yeah, everybody has to have a reading book. Uh, reading is very important, so they read at choose time and you'll see people reading around, around the school site as well. Uh, we have an extensive library with over 7,000 books in it, uh, which children can, can borrow, uh, or you can bring books in from home. Um, that seems to be the last question. Okay. So my, my last question is, why would you recommend Cove School? Um, it's a really nice school. There's lots of help if you're like lost, stuck with things. Um, the teachers are really nice. You can make loads of new friends. Um, yeah. What's the key change you would have seen in your five years here? Key change is behaviour and positivity, definitely. And um, just the journey that school's been on to now, it's the best year that I've had in the school, definitely, this year. And they don't know these questions, by the way. I'm just kind of like throwing them out. <laughs> I'm just thinking of them as I'm going around. So how has the school prepared you for six more? Uh, the school is definitely preparing very well, and especially considering we've missed so much of so much important time for preparation. Uh, but we, uh, it's very clear the uh, processes that will be going on, and uh, the school are very helpful with that, with information booklets. We've had quite a lot of those recently, um, not just from the colleges, but other things from the schools that handed us, that the school handed us out. And we definitely feel there's a lot of support here for us to continue our education. That was recognised by the fact that last year we got the National Careers Award and we're the only school in Hampshire to have got that uh, on one of the few schools nationally uh, and that's above and beyond what is the standard required uh, for schools because our careers programme starts in year seven and works all the way through to year 11 uh, with various employers and interview techniques and CV writing and, and option choices and so on. That's it. Okay well thank you very much for, for joining us. Um, we really do wish we could see you in yeah. person because it made life so much easier uh, and, 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 and actually sort of have a proper chat to you. If you have any other questions, uh, please do just email them in or give us a call uh, and we'll try our best to, to answer them. But for now, have a lovely, lovely evening. Thank you. Okay. That's it, thank you, Debbie.